think it was even thinking. I th like it was just pure drive of I don't want to be here, I don't want to be doing this at certain moments. But just knowing you couldn't stop. I don't even know if there was a word. Like it's more like I can't not go. <laughs> or I can't not do this. So you just breathe and don't think and just do it. And then somehow you look back and you did it. something and you don't really know why and this is exactly my relationship with India I had no idea why I'm coming here and um, the more I'm being here and the more I'm being absorbed to like Indians lifestyle and even living in the ashram I know why I'm here it's only day six so I am inspired to see what's gonna come up as a student I definitely feel like Yoga has brought such a different lens for me to live and to be in life um, and hopefully as a teacher that's what I will be offering to my students as well. It's not only how can you be on your mat but also in life. Um, I wanted a change. I wanted to be pushed out of my comfort zone and I wanted to do yoga um, and, I w and I wanted to do a yoga training but I I knew that I would be pushed coming here on this training, and especially in India, um, and that's what I'm getting. It's great. I got an email uh, from her because she thought I was a different Kendra, and it was about this yoga training in India. And I thought, okay, well, I at that point had only completed 100 hours of a 200-hour yoga teacher training. And so I just happened to look at her website and she was doing a 200 hour and was halfway, about halfway through that training. So I emailed her back immediately and said, hi, I don't even know how I got this email. I don't know if you even know who I am, <laughs> but I'm interested in finishing this 200 hour with you in the hopes of going to India with you. And she emailed back and said, this is unorthodox, but Let's meet for coffee. She has just an abundance of knowledge, um, not just in the physical yoga class, asana, but she has just this amazing presence and also the way she lives yoga in her life. I, I, that was probably the one thing I would say about her is that she is probably one of the teachers or maybe I don't want to say the only teacher, but one that I have found that lives yoga. She just brings a more, um, just brings me more grounded in my practice. 
so I always leave the class wanting more. My name is Shelley Tomzik. I'm a yoga teacher in Vancouver. I've been teaching here for um, over 16 years and practicing yoga for about 20 years. This training was a 300-hour advanced teacher training in Tiruvamai, India. It was a one-month intensive. Currently, I teach at Yale Town Y Yoga and One Yoga for the People, and I've studied the main threads of the yoga tradition, which I've uh, drawn from, are Hatha, Ashtanga, Anusara Yoga, and Iyengar Yoga. And I continue to study and evolve, and I, I have a tantric kind of lens in which I use everything. So, what Shelley brings to my life in, in my practice, in, my, in the classes I take with her, she has this magical ability to integrate the whole esoteric spiritual world, everything like universal out there that I have trouble um, harnessing. And she brings it, she, she, she creeps it into the classes and, and, and marries it with the alignment and the physical principles and you know, the science of yoga and, and really does a great job at putting the two together and, and actually exemplifying what the term yoga really means and, and encouraging change and evolution in the person's practice but also in their full life like it's really the full yoga lifestyle how can you integrate the practice into your everyday existence and I find when I leave her classes I I take a lot with me into the world and it doesn't just stay in the, on the mat whereas a lot of other teachers may I may just have that mat practice but she really she gets into your bones like I mentioned that Shelly, she can really provide something for everybody. You know, she knows how to relate to um, a person that's on a spiritual journey or a person that's really into the therapeutics of the yoga or just any aspect of what people are coming to learn here, she can do. You know, she's very good at observing people and what they need at the time. So you really feel supported and it brings out and supports you on that journey. So, no matter what the reason, you, you will thrive and you will be supported. <laughs> um, it's just like Shelly is herself. Like she's real, she's herself. She like tells it how it is. So it's, you know, you're not kind of, you know where you're at with her, you know where you stand. And she has a lot of integrity, like as a person. And so kind of learning from her, um, you know, and doing a 500 or 300 hour, um, yeah, I don't know, like, am I going to teach after? That's a question that keeps coming up for me. But it's not really the main purpose for me, I guess. It's really, like, here I am in India and everything we're experiencing, like, so far it's been, like, not even a week yet, has just been amazing and you wouldn't get this experience with anyone else. And I think, too, I'm constantly awestruck by her compassion and her passion and her recommitment to us as students and also to what she's teaching. She is constantly just coming back to health, really, and how there's so much power in that and that we have the opportunity to take that into our own hands and to heal ourselves in so many different ways, not just physically but also emotionally and spiritually, and it, she's just a constant reminder of that. You just made me think she's not really, she's, she's teaching as much about doing as she is about giving. Mm. Like she's teaching you how to do so much, but it's coming from the place of wanting to know how to do these things so that you can give them, which is beautiful. Yeah. Well, what's unique probably about my approach is it's, it again, it's from this place of using um, everything from the ordinary to the extraordinary. So I draw from a lot of teachings and a lot of different schools and um, to provide the context. 
but the content that comes out is often through spontaneity and uh, going deeper in the teachings and um, drawing from my own practices. So meditation, pranayama, I work with all the different limbs and offer that experientially to my students. So often it's kind of, in a sense, you don't know what you're going to get. It's a bit of alchemy and play between a very serious traditional approach, alignment-based asana, and structure and discipline and commitment, yet there's a lot of having a sense of humor, play, um, drawing the essence out of people, the trainings particularly, because I work with a lot of teachers. And my approach is a lot of mentorship. And I draw from uh, working with people's relationship to food, their relationship to the breath, you know, their meditation practices. The asana is just the beginning point, really. It's a lifelong study to expand the self. So in 2012, um, Shelly offered a 200-hour teacher training, and it was like once a month, like one weekend per month for 10 months. And so I was like, oh, I think I'll try that. Afterwards, I did a mentorship with her. Um, and she's just... Yeah, how do I, I don't know, Shelly is like re really real and I can really relate to her and yeah, just like really easy to talk to and like so in the mentorship she really helped me kind of like go, I don't know, get through like some hard things and like show perspective and really try to help me with my meditation practice. Um, but then also that kind of responsibility that it is on me at the end of the day to make sure that, you know, I do meditate and I do have a home practice. Yeah, India was a very unique situation because I have connections there via through my Baul lineage. So there was an ashram we stayed at in Tiruvamalai and is very close to Yogi Ram Sarakumar's ashram. Uh, this lineage is connected to Papa Ram Das. Being in, in an ashram environment allows students just to experience that. Like, it's so different than their daily life in the world. So it's, a, it's an intensive, it's a retreat into themselves more. You're going to face challenges. Um, for example, the meditation would start um, very early in the morning. So you have to get up early in India, which is already intense, and sit with oneself for an hour. I mean, some people who came didn't have yet a strong meditation practice, but enough interest that they wanted to deepen it. So, you know, the first week they're struggling, they're working through it. There was a lot of support in talking about their process, but quickly people found how nourishing that kind of daily life schedule was like. It's nothing I've ever experienced before and tests you in so many ways. You can just drop into your true self because you like, have no other distractions and um, yeah you just you get to learn about yourself on a deeper level. It's been amazing. I really love the lifestyle of having a discipline schedule to wake up and meditate and you eat with the group, you you practice with the group. Um, however, and also you are you're bonding with people and you're you're living with people. So it's it's challenging to live in a community because there's so many things that are coming up. So you really have to uh, make sure that like this is my practice. Like I have to make sure that I stay centered and practice meditation not only when I'm sitting down but practice it throughout the whole day and not react and just kind of like go more inward and and practice compassion which is challenging um, and also this ashram is so beautiful and amazing and it almost feels like we're not in India sometimes and when you go outside of the ashram you're like 
wow, we're in India. So it's it's beautiful and it's it, it gives us this amazing contrast of like having our comforts here, which is really good. The meditation has also been good in the sense that there's because everyone's doing it, there's a set time, there's kind of that communal support to show up for meditation. And so even though sometimes it's hard, um, the ashram is a space that really allows that and kind of encourages it. Meditation's been hard. It's been really challenging for me. In the beginning, the first week and a half, I, I was okay the first few, and then the, I think it was the third, fourth, fifth one I really struggled. And... Um, I'm not one to give up, so it almost gives me that, that fire to keep going when it is hard. So the last two meditations I've actually had very clear and um, calm meditations, and I wrote home and told my sister how I didn't move for one hour. It's probably the, <laughs> the only time I've ever done that, so it was, it's, I've had big breakthroughs here. When I first got here, I feel like my meditations were more focused. Right now they, well maybe that's not entirely true either because my mind was racing everywhere. But now it's kind of like I found this little hole that I escape into. So it's not even like I'm focusing on my meditation anymore. It's like I'm just sitting there like this, almost half sleeping. So it's cheating. So my meditation is cheating right now. <laughs> so meditation is a huge thing that's come up pretty strongly keep being here an hour every morning and I didn't have a meditation practice ever. So that is something I'd like to continue further in exploring what it is and what comes up for me and, and yeah, just going deeper into that stuff that you can't really, wherein you can't distract yourself. There definitely is a, like a, an energy here um, I think it's I think it it's based from the mastery of the people that have practiced here and of the devotion of the people that have practiced here. Like it seems to just kind of permeate throughout this whole space. And so coming into it, I feel like a lot of my obstacles for my own practices have either just dissolved or else shrunk incredibly just by the mere fact that I'm here. It's been amazing, very peaceful. Um, I feel very lucky to experience such an authentic ashram, I would say. I, I think it's as pure an ashram experience as you could get, really. It's the people are just so focused on their own spirituality and their own sadhana, but yet they're so open and welcoming to you and to help you. Yeah, it's a very giving environment. Because it's India, that's where the roots are. So I think there was a lot of ritual. We went to a lot of temples. We climbed mountains. We faced, um, you know, both the sacred and a bit of insanity at the same time and that does something I think it it gives a unique opportunity to study the the history of yoga in a in a different way I don't know it's like almost like I'm, I'm seeing for the first time in a very long time what's actually going on in my own mind and my in, in my heart like what the state of it really is and what it's been for probably a long time it's a process so i understand and appreciate the full spectrum that can arise during a training like there's a lot of introspection there's a lot to digest what causes me fear is yeah, recognizing that I have so much fear. But it's good. So I'm happy with that. And that's one of the reasons why I came here, because it made me a little bit scared. But I knew that I would be working through going inward, and that was really scary. I am free. I am love. I am my true self. I am fearless. I'm a fearless woman. 
I am compassion. Students can expect a sense of community and connection and support. It's a real open learning environment where students can just fully express themselves. And within that support, you know, a lot of playfulness. So from my teachings, personally, I have an edge, you know, I get really serious, but I mix that in with, the, with some humor, you know, I even get really silly sometimes as people know me. But now that I'm here, it's, it's becoming something very different. Um, just in the, in the meditations and in the times that I've had to reflect and even in the physical practices, the asanas, like I've found my mind opening up to questions that I've been asking myself for years um, with an ease that is kind of shocking. Like it's answers are coming to my mind or the right questions are coming to my mind in ways that I wouldn't have imagined. Like it's it's still kind of happening and so I don't really know exactly where it's going but I'm, I'm, I'm a little shocked <laughs> and excited um, and definitely committed. I have, I have every intention now of trusting this process and just being open to wherever it is that it's already taken me. How it allows me to move through things and move things through my body get out of my mind and how I can I literally feel like I'm stretching out emotions from my muscles and, and bringing other things into my core on every breath so I think that that's what I, why I keep coming back to the practice so a typical day in my training in India the ashram would start with silence early morning meditation practice pranayama, asana practice. We would study the dharma, you know, the philosophy. And then there would be a lot of time for the teachers to prepare and evolve their, um, to refine their teaching skills. But I really want to know how to help heal people's bodies and I know that comes from alignment, and Shelley's a master at that. So I think that is where my focus is, more in the therapeutics. I want to deepen my yoga teaching. I want to explore um, my meditation practice. I want it to become part of my life. So I want, I want, and I want to um, just become a more confident and more knowledgeable teacher. I want to bring back lots of information for my students in Vancouver. I think yoga trainings, when, when people are looking for a yoga training, I think to, you know, my own experience, I always studied with the teacher. It's not necessarily about the studio or school or where you're studying. It's more about who you're studying with and that you have a resonance with them. So I would suggest if anyone was interested in my training to come to my classes, I'm, I'm willing to meet with them and really connect on a personal level. I think that's important, and, you know, to, to really know who you're studying with and what they have to offer. I offer a lot of philosophy and a lot of personal practice and how to strengthen the stamina of your personal practice so that when you teach, you're, you're constantly nourishing yourself, re-inspiring yourself and offering. At the end of my teacher trainings, I've, I've discovered and people have mentioned that they really feel confident about teaching. But I really go for what's practical. I have a lot of the context of the philosophy and these old traditions, but also um, they start teaching day one often. And so it's really a, a big emphasis in the trainings to develop your voice, your observation skills, 
to be able to sequence, to understand sequencing and understanding the pose alignment therapeutics. I, as a teacher of yoga, I would love to be able to give my students, yeah, that education almost, like a, an understanding of why we do the poses and why your knee doesn't go past the ankle in this pose and, and get people learning about their body because I think that a lot of people don't know about their bodies and I know how it works and what is optimal in terms of a warrior two stance and why and, and the greater people know about their bodies and this incredible structure and the way that it works, the more appreciation they have for it, the better they treat it. You know, the more they want to go deeper and learn not just the physical stuff, but whatever else comes up emotionally and spiritually and, and ultimately how you can heal from within, but also, yeah, completely respect this awesome existence being bunch of cells that we have. So I hope to give that to the students that I teach. Something that Shelley said the other day was so helpful and it was really about finding the, looking for the beauty first instead of how we're normally we always look for the negative. Moments where I felt in touch with something, um, something deeper, something greater, something grander take those little snippets, you know, you could count maybe half a dozen moments that you really, really felt like, wow, there's something here. And then those, you could count them as just drops of water. <laughs> and now you're like, you're in the cloud or you're in the ocean. Like, this is just like, this just feels like it's not snippets, it's not moments. Like, you're practically swimming in it. Like, you see it everywhere all the time. In the most mundane exchanges with complete strangers, it feels just as potent as, as moments that you might find profound back home with someone that you consider to be enlightened or spiritual or, or committed to something greater than just the physical space around them. I guess just being here, I don't know. <laughs> I hope that um, being at the bone place where I am inspires others. I find it beautiful. <laughs> but um, also just being true. I see beauty in that. Mm -hmm. My truth is that I, I haven't known the truth. You know, for, the, for the past 29 years of my existence that I haven't really been in touch with it. And that that's okay. That that is completely forgivable. <laughs> um, but that having lived as a finite being this long, and now kind of being open and aware of something grander than that, I don't have the same kind of excuses as I used to. And I think when you're at the level of the teacher-student relationship in which you want to take a training, you have more of a, a serious approach. And so I meet them exactly where they're at. I mean, that's really the relationship. It's reciprocal. I only give as much as they want and need in that moment. You know, and it's an exchange. It's a communication. It's a dialogue using the different views of the philosophies to, um, you know, just being with whatever rises in the body and honoring that, really having a mutual respect for one another. And I believe in an integrity and having integrity um, 
and, and noticing where you lack integrity and being okay there and working with that. So I work a lot with the dark and the light. It's, and being able to move in and through the body and rest in where you're at, even if that means you're afraid or sad, angry. It's almost even going so deep as to discover what's underneath those emotions or underneath the thought waves that can be distracting and then refining and, and bringing more clarity into your life, both on and off the mat. Why? It's, it will change your life. And I'm not just saying this, and you have to be ready if you want your, your, some kind of shift in your life. And even seeing all the girls here, like I know that they will take something, they'll go back to their regular lives and I know something will shift. I see it already. And this is not just a yoga training. This is like a life training almost. So for the people who are ready for that, they'll just automatically be drawn to it. Like I know all of these girls, it didn't just happen for them. I know that somehow synchronistically had to happen for them in their lives, including myself. And the, the actual training, the yoga training that Shelly's teaching is amazing. She has so much knowledge and not only in the yoga is what we think of yoga is in the West. There's so many layers, so many layers. And so that's what Shelly has to offer. And if, if people are interested in, and ready for that knowledge, that's the training for them. Well, it depends on the training. And anybody is welcome to sign up for the training. There's some that have some more prerequisites or equivalent trainings and or years of practice, for example. Like for example, in your 200 hour training, anyone you know who's, who's practiced yoga for a year or so can, can register. For a 300 hour more you know experienced, practice, uh, maybe some teaching under your belt, but not necessarily, maybe a 200 hour training already previously or an equivalency. So often there'll be someone who's already a health practitioner, you know, like an acupuncturist or a massage therapist. They already have a really solid awareness of the anatomy and how to be a body worker. So it's fine to to often take the 300 hour training, for example. And, you know, it's anyone who, who really wants to learn and go deeper in their own practices. You don't even have to want to be a teacher to take a training. Most often, I would say, about half the students come in that way. They just, I just want to deepen my practice. I want to understand this in my own body. But via through the teaching, it ends up, they get excited. They realize they have this inner voice, this confidence grows in them. And they're like, wow, I actually think I could teach. And, and then enjoy that uh, prospect teaching in the group. And then after even just teaching friends and family. So it's really for anyone who has an you know, a serious intention to practice. It just feels like a family in such a short time. It's wild. So it's sort of emotional in how you would leave your home when you grow up. It kind of feels like the same thing in a really short amount of time, it's like that first step out into the world. The old me would have been just like freaking out and stressed and coming up with all of these different game plans. 
And I find myself being pulled to that again. But then I'm sitting in what I've learned this past month and just letting it be. And still going to where we want to go and figuring it out when we get there. And having the trust and the faith that it will work out the way it's supposed to. And having the confidence knowing that we are fine and that we're enough. And there's no need to worry because you have yourself even to be with. I want to bring back what I've learned, the teachings, and to my students. But in my life, just that commitment, I think, of, of staying with meditation, uh, pranayama, and um, just remembering your, yourself. I will miss. I, I just feel like I'm starting to settle into it, you know? I don't know if that's because we're leaving so soon, um, but I really feel like I'm just sort of starting to be like, okay, this, is, this week has been really solid for me in terms of the routine and being good with it and, you know, moving into that challenge inside, like really trying to do that. And then we're leaving, so I think I'll miss that for sure, and I'll miss the daily challenge of like what presents to you that day, and you know, not being able to go anywhere else but here to face it. So, and the kids, and the people. <laughs> I love the girls. I will miss the sangha that have, we have created here, and I know. Now, for my life, it's really important to have that. I think all of that combined has given me uh, a new appreciation for the present moment and an idea of how I can live in that. Um, I've definitely witnessed people that do live in that, and I've been given some direction on how to get there and and so I, I want to keep moving in that way and keep developing myself to embody that and hopefully thereby spreading it to those around me the same way these people have spread it to me. Advaita Jyotis Sarupa, Abhyaj Karunavu, Bhagavan.